today's show. You know, our professor promised us that we would get to present a, to a panel of experts on the investment style of Warren Buffett. We'd get to present right. these investment ideas. And true to his word, we did present to a panel and the panel consisted of one person and that person was Warren Buffett. And no way. <laughs> for me, what? Oh for my me God. it was, you know, it's one of those I call it my pinch me moment because I just couldn't yeah. believe I was sitting there and he was as personable as can be. His He is sharp as a tack. His memory is incredible. And he gave he engaged, there were 30 students. Uh, I was one of the fortunate few to actually get to sit at his table for lunch. He brought us all cheeseburgers, wow. french fries, <laughs> cherry cokes, and ice cream sundaes. Five, four, four three, two, one, one. Welcome to the Creator Institute Podcast. Hey everybody, on today's TED Talk, we learn the answer to what happens when the world needs to give you a sign. And the answer is sometimes the world sends you dilly bars and a TED Talk. Uh, on today's episode, we get to hang out with Alana Mueller. She tells the epic story of how she went from being a math major who never had the intention of writing a book to effectively a series of happy accidents that brought her face to face with her idol, Warren Buffett, and led her to launch a book and ultimately kind of change her trajectory as, a, as an author and a businesswoman really helping kind of explain the world of networking to people who never thought of it as sort of a way that you could uh, better yourself. It's a great conversation. And I, what I loved about her sort of stories is in some ways she is constantly trying to think about how to connect with humans, how to how to use these connections to better yourself. And I think that what what I found so interesting was was hearing how, listen, you have to work on it. You have to work to get great at networking. And I think for people who are looking to create, looking to build things, it is about not just about networking, but it's about building communities, whether you're you know, interviewing people for your book or for your podcast, whatever it may be. It's a fun interview. Her story is amazingly interesting, uh, sort of what happened to happen in a two-day period that set her off on a trajectory to decide to, to, to write a blog for 30 days. And now something she does every November is write 30 blog posts in the month, uh, set her off to write a book and ultimately has landed her uh, a business where she is sort of the master networker, which I think she deserves some kind of a katana. Uh, Alana Mueller, everyone, super fun story today. Okay, I, I'm i super excited because I get to talk about an epic cherry Coke luncheon that, that uh, <laughs> my guest had today that I think will blow everyone away. And, and, uh, and so I'm really excited to have you on the show today. This is going to be fun. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Yes. So we, we found out before, as we were prepping for this, that we sort of lived in the same orbit of the, the Kaufman world. And I think it both exposed us to this sort of world of entrepreneurial mindsets and thinkings. And I think it's been, it's been a fun place to sort of there's a bunch of great humans that I think brought us together through that experience. Totally agree with you. Totally agree. And, and indeed, it's a small world. So I'm, I'm so glad we're finally connected. Me too. Me too. So let's just kick off with your story of, of the, the person who is the math major who eventually <laughs> becomes a, 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 a novelist. I would just love to hear the story of how this epic adventure that has, has sort of changed your life began from uh, back in, you know, not like six or seven years ago, back in, in 2011, 2010. Tell us the story of how you became uh, became an author that, that I think is will surprise people in some ways for someone who said, I never think I would be really great at writing. For sure. You know, I'm definitely an accidental author. I, it was, I never had a book in me. This was not something that I had on my to-do list or my, my bucket list, as some people say. Um, for me, what happened was I had been running a company for the Kauffman Foundation called Kauffman Fast Track and really thought I was just living the dream because I was teaching entrepreneurs to start and grow companies effectively uh, throughout the world. And, and really, that was truly my passion. I was working for a wonderful organization doing what I thought was wonderful work. And it was, it was. Uh, but what happened to me was this. I, um, I have this long-standing affection for Warren Buffett. In fact, <laughs> I've been... Me too. I've been to um, an embarrassing number of annual meetings. So I think this May will mark, I believe, my 16th annual uh, annual meeting. Really? And consecutive, wow. haven't missed one yet. Knock on something. I hope not to miss any. Dilly bars uh, for breakfast. As, yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. 
Um, so, so a friend of mine actually at the Kaufman Foundation knew about this, you know, strange obsession of mine. And he told me that he was planning to take a course at the University of Nebraska called the Genius of Warren Buffett. Huh. And what this course was, what the professor promised is that he would teach us everything there was to know about the man, the myth, the legend, who is Warren Buffett. Yeah. So we learned everything from, you know, not surprisingly, we learned about Warren Buffett's investment style, his approach to management, who he was as a philanthropist, uh, as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a manager, all these different aspects to Warren Buffett. And he would bring in guest speakers from time to time. And we as students knew that the final project or the, the final piece of the course was now that we understood everything there was to know about Warren Buffett, we were to come up with an investment idea that a guy like Warren Buffett might be interested in investing in. And then we would- Was there anything, oh, was there anything about, I mean, I saw Warren Buffett, he did, they recently put out a, a, a documentary on HBO about Warren yeah. and it was, I mean, it, it, you know, I, I'd say it's, a lot of people were surprised at all the things in it because he's sort of a private man. Was yeah. there anything that most surprised <laughs> you about, I mean, you know, as much as he's this sort of jolly old grandfather to all of us, anything that most surprised you about him as, as you were getting to know him in this sort of unique, unique way? Yeah. You know, he's, he's not only is he private, but he's incredibly humble and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, still driving the same Buick, living in the same house that he's always driven, always lived in, um, right. you know, so just a humble guy. And so for one of the wealthiest human beings on the planet, you'd never know it from just meeting him on the street. He's mm -hmm. just a humble guy. And I think that that really comes through literally in every aspect of his life. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and it's actually pretty heartening. I mean, what it, what it shows is that people are people and, you know, he's, he's just a wealthier one of those people, but yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it was it was really heartening, and and frankly, people really like him, and so yeah. it's not surprising yeah. that that you know individuals have such affection for him because not only does he sort of exude as you describe kind of this grandfatherly thing, but it's real. I mean, he yeah. is who he is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, our professor promised us that we would get to present a, to a panel of experts on the investment style of Warren Buffett. We'd get to present right. these investment ideas. And true to his word, we did present to a panel and the panel consisted of one person and that person was Warren Buffett. And no way. <laughs> for me, oh for my me God. it was, you know, it's one of those, I call it my pinch me moment because I just couldn't yeah. believe I was sitting there and he was as personable as can be. His, he is sharp as attack. His memory is incredible. And mm -hmm. he gave, he engaged, there were 30 students. Uh, I was mm -hmm. one of the fortunate few to actually get to sit at his table for lunch. He brought us all cheeseburgers, wow. French fries, <laughs> cherry Cokes and ice cream sundaes. And, yeah, and, and queen all the way. that's <laughs> exactly right. And by the way, yeah. I, I didn't pay $2.5 million to be sitting there either, which was kind of nice. <laughs> ah, yeah. You're, you're, you're lucky on that one. <laughs> Um, but it might have been worth it. Yeah, yeah, you know, you might be right. I will tell you, though, it was such an inspiring, an inspiring occasion for me that it got me to do something that I never thought I would do. Um, I had seen actually, I had seen a TED talk uh, just prior to that Warren Buffett lunch uh, by a guy named Matt Cutts. Now, mm -hmm. Matt is a programmer at Google, mm -hmm. and and his TED talk. One is one of the most watched TED Talks in history. It's also one of the shortest. And yet, for me, it's one of the ones that really stands out and frankly changed my life. He, he talked about there's nothing better than being a programmer at Google. But at some point, he realized there had to be maybe more to life than just programming at Google. So mm -hmm. what he did is every 30 days, he would try something new. And some of them stuck and some of them he enjoyed for those 30 days and will never go back to. So for mm -hmm. example... One thirty days, he rode his bike to work every day, and he loves it so much that now he regularly rides his bike to work. Another 30 days, he huh. gave up sugar and hated it so much that day 31, <laughs> all he ate was candy and said he'd never give up sugar again. <laughs> um, and then, of course, came the month of November, and he described it this way. He said, then came the month of November, and it's this cultish thing called National Novel Writing Month, and, and people in the know call it NaNoWriMo for short. And essentially, if you follow the rules, so to speak, of National Novel Writing Month, you emerge from November with a 50,000 word novel. And what Matt said is that the trick is and the, and the rule is you're not allowed to go to bed each night during the month of November until you've written your 1,667 words and you finish November with 50,000 words. And he said, wow. 
I did this. And frankly, it is the worst novel known to humanity. And yet <laughs> at a cocktail party now, when people say, what do you do? I say, I'm a novelist. <laughs> and I mm. loved that. And so on the heels of this October 30th, 2011 lunch with Warren Buffett, I thought, you know, November 1st is coming and I actually yeah. have a skill. And my skill is that surprisingly, surprising at least to me, is it turns out I'm pretty good at networking. I, I, what happened yeah. to me was I had been an executive with Sprint, which I loved. I had an amazing 10-year career at Sprint. Uh, but I had decided since I'd always wanted to be an entrepreneur that I was going to pursue entrepreneurship. And mm. yet I didn't have a business idea. And so mm. my idea was that I was going to start networking to figure out what I wanted to do next, what I wanted to be when I grew up, so to speak. Hmm. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's interesting for 10 years at Sprint, I had an amazing career there, uh, but I, I didn't know anybody else in my city and I'm from Kansas city. This is where I live now. It's yeah. where I grew up. And yet, um, Sprint's like an anchor, anchor client in the, in the, it place, is, it you know? really, a- really is. And, um, but I'd been so heads down and focused on the four walls of my job for 10 years that I didn't know any professionals in Kansas City outside those four walls. And so I mm. finally lifted my head and started networking. I started by selecting five people and those people agreed to meet with me for either coffee or lunch. And I said, you know, I've made this crazy decision to quit my job and become an entrepreneur. What do you think? And frankly, four of the five said, brilliant idea. You should have thought of it sooner. Now go figure out what you're meant to do. <laughs> the fifth person told me I was out of my mind and he, he wasn't that polite about it, frankly. But um, all five people, even the guy who thought I was nuts said, what can I do to help you? And that was a life-changing question. And what I said was, who else should I go meet? Hmm. And they each gave me the names of three to five more people. And so I went and met with those people hmm. and I did quit my job. And in a nine month period of time, I was able to connect with 200 people that I didn't know before. And wow. what started happening is people started asking me, what is your secret to networking? And I'd say, ah, come closer. <laughs> and I'd say the secret <laughs> to networking is all the magic. Yes, grasshopper. And um, I, I said, you know, the secret to networking is you reach out, you say, do you want to meet? They say yes. And you meet and people <laughs> say, no, no, no. I get that. How did you do it? Like, no, no. So I had been keeping, yeah. <laughs> I had been keeping this outline, and and I decided that during that National Novel Writing Month during 2011, I would fill out the outline and, wow. and get a little more specific, and that's that's how this happened. <laughs> so, so, so it was it was one of those things that you more than anything, right? I mean, you, you sort of, I always say that you sort of need to be in the right mindset and there needs to be sort of inspiration to help someone do something substantive, like create something like this. So yours, yours where you'd sort of been having all these experiences and then it was these sort of two factors that happened basically within a couple of days of each other that sort of said to you, I want to go forth and create something and not yeah, knowing what it would exactly. I, I think you're right. I think what happens is you know, when you get energized or inspired, as you described by something, you want to go do something with that energy. Yeah. And for me, basically spilling it on writing, spilling it on paper so that when people would say, what's the secret to networking? And I could send them to the silly blog, you know, and I'd say, good luck to you. Um, yeah. I, I, that's what I thought this was going to be about. I thought I would write for those 30 days and literally never write again because writing was not, mm -hmm. not the thing that I really enjoyed. I have to tell you right. though, it, it, it has become not only a consistent and meaningful part of my life, but it's very cathartic. And I find that, mm -hmm. especially with blogging, uh, so for people, especially who don't think of themselves as writers or as authors, blogging can be a really great way to express themselves, even if they never publish it outside you know, their, their own journal or their own computer. I think it can be a really mm -hmm. useful means of thinking through and processing challenges or things that are exciting and special in their lives. And, and for me, that's what this was. Mm -hmm. And you've, and you know, I, I was, I was stalking your blog a little bit. You have, you've sort of kept true to this November where you blog <laughs> every day in November, right? I, I do. It's like, I mean, <laughs> It, it's like, you know, you're a consistent blogger weekly, every other week or yeah. so. And then suddenly November hits. It's like, boom, like there's a, something coming out every single ah, day. You know, uh, is not that, too many people catch that. Good catch. Yes. I, you know, listen, I, I do my, I do my homework <laughs> here. Is that, is that something that you've, uh, 
Is that something that you sort of set as a, as a sort of a reminder to kind of keep you true to what, where this all started? I do. Um, you know, for me, the tradition of blogging, first of all, I do try to blog every week. This, this January has been a little challenging for me, but I will <laughs> tell you that, um, I, I do try to blog pretty consistently every week. Um, but you're right. During November, I go back to that tradition and I try to blog mm-hmm. every single day. I will tell you, um, I started something three years ago. And again, it was by happenstance. I had a little bit of a personal tragedy. I, on a Monday uh, in November, November 3rd, I lost my father-in-law. And then mm-hmm. on Friday, I lost my grandfather. Wow. And yet it was November and yeah. I was supposed to be blogging every right. day. Right. And honestly, I was not in the mindset to be blogging every day. And as if the universe delivered them to me, these were people who did not know each other. <laughs> people started sending me guest posts and hmm. they saved my November. And what I found is that by welcoming other people's voices into my own writing, I was able to... I think to bring a little more depth and color to coffee, lunch, coffee that I didn't have before. Mm -hmm. And so the following year, and then this past year, this past November, I've welcomed at least half, I've welcomed guest bloggers. And in fact, during this past November of 2017, I, I had 20 people submit guest posts and they were so good and so unique and interesting that I accepted all of them. And in some ways, it's like I was cheating during November. But what I really think is that it's a benefit for uh, what I call my my coffee lunch coffee or my CLC community, mm-hmm. because I do think it adds a little more flavor to the mm-hmm. idea of networking, of leadership, of entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. And you, you, we sh- I shared this before, right? That I think that there is that you know you you set on a very I would say it a very uh, it's common journey where people say I want to be an entrepreneur and like you know sort of I don't necessarily know what that means. But uh, but there's this path that that people sometimes fall into that you you seem to, which is you created something that then turned into that you were surprised. Oh my gosh, this is a business. Uh, this this yeah. book turned into a thing. Like it became like now your world. H- how did that sort of transpire? Because it had to, you know, again, sort of like I'm setting out on this like adventure to network and maybe to start a company, and now this book happens. Warren Buffett's having dilly bars with you, and the next thing you know, you're <laughs> basically become the master networker and coach and guru and speaker. How did this, how did this happen? You know, um, first of all, it was an accident. This, and which is a little embarrassing to me because I already shared with, with you and the audience that, um, I was trying to teach people very intentionally how to successfully start and grow companies. So (laughs) for this to be an accidental entrepreneurial venture is a little embarrassing. And yet I'm so happy and proud of it. Honestly, the reason I decided to pursue this, I'll tell you, about a month after the book came out, I was contacted out of the blue from uh, an organization in in another city. And I didn't know anybody there. But what they said to me was, we understand that you've written a book about networking. We're having a women's conference. And we wonder if you would like, what they said was, we we wonder if you'd like to host a networking workshop. And when they said that to me, what I thought they meant is they wanted me to be a sponsor of their conference. And then I'd get an hour to do my thing. And honestly, I I couldn't have afforded it because I'd spent all my savings on a silly book that was supposed to be a hobby. Right, right. right. (laughs) And um, so I said, sure. And I, I said, but my fee is this. And I gave them a price. And um, I'll train up to 200 people and give them all a copy of my book. And within five minutes, they said, that sounds great. And I, <laughs> I, was, I wondered, what just happened? <laughs> Wait a second, I started and, a business. <laughs> and so I went and I did my workshop. And that year, the year the book came out, I was hired 40 more times wow. by organizations around the country to give talks on the topic of networking. Hmm. And I... I didn't make enough to live on, but I made a shocking amount of money for something that was never intended to be anything than something. You know, I thought I'd write this book and tell my grandchildren that granny wrote a book and they'd pat me on the head and tell me I was cute. Um, It was never supposed to be anything. And interestingly, about a year later, a year after the book came out, I was invited by one of my clients from the Kauffman Foundation to come experience their approach to entrepreneurial and executive development. And it was in Bale, Colorado. And honestly, I didn't want to go, which sounds ridiculous, but it required me giving up a weekend with my family, which I was, I was hesitant to do. Mm-hmm. And yet I went and that was, uh, that was November of 2013. And 
I was, I'm not a very passive aggressive person, but I was pretty passive aggressive about this. I, I didn't want to do the pre-work. I wasn't going to participate in the activities, but about, I don't know, a minute after I got there, they had drawn me in hook, line and sinker. And we did all these different value setting exercises, talking about our history and our future and our dreams and our goals. And on Sunday, the facilitator said, well, congratulations. There were seven of us. She said, congratulations, team. You've arrived at the final exercise of the weekend. I'm going to give you 30 minutes. And in five words or fewer, I'd like you to state your life's purpose. Mm. And honestly, if on Friday she had told us that on Sunday we'd be stating our life's purpose, (laughs) I would have left. (laughs) Yes, exactly. I thought that that was such a ridiculous concept. I mean, that's sort of like answering the question, what is the meaning of life? Right, I, was, right. I just thought it was 43, ridiculous. Uh, 43, that's the answer. That's, the <laughs> that's what I heard. Yeah. Yes, that's the answer. Um, it's interesting though, as, as hesitant about that as I would have been on Friday, when she said, I'm giving you 30 minutes, it took me 30 seconds and I was done. And she mm. looked at me and she said, okay, hotshot, I can see that you've finished before we've even started. What did you say? And I said, my life's purpose is to connect, inspire, and empower community. And she said, yes, it is. You can get your stuff and go. And honestly, I wow. cried. <laughs> I cried. Ah, I, um, amazing. It was as if I had been struck by lightning and hmm. um, everything just became clear to me. And so I knew that I needed to go create this business. And uh, unfortunately for my poor husband, it was the second time in our marriage that I told him I was quitting my job. <laughs> so he said, <laughs> no, no more weekend retreats for you, young lady. But, yeah, seriously. Um, but honestly, it's true. And I think that anybody who has any entrepreneurial intent at all, anybody who has had this kind of experience knows that once you figure out what it is you're meant to do, it's time to go do it. And so mm-hmm. that's what I did. Again, it took me several months to figure out how to not only gracefully exit my job, which I loved and I still love, um, but but to figure out, can this even be a business? Can you make money networking, which sounds ridiculous? Mm-hmm. But the truth is, Mm -hmm. you can put a structure together that is revenue generating, that is meaningful, that not only provides you with meaningful work, but most importantly, provides your clients with something that is meaningful and tangible for them, something that people will actually pay for and find value in. And I feel so lucky and blessed and fortunate that I found that thing. I When I get up in the morning and it's not like I'm going to a job, it's like I get to do this thing that I love to do. Yeah. And and yeah. and it's um it's a really special feeling. So I'm 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 very lucky. I love it. And and it's what I think is so interesting about it is the depth that you developed through this process of discovery of a book, you know, of creating a book. And, and I think it's as much as it's like a surprise, it's probably like when, when you really reflect on it and having now seen this with a bunch of authors, it sort of shouldn't be a surprise at all, right? Like once you go through that process of actually really having the depth and understanding it and being willing to share it, it's like, well, duh, sister, like this is what you were going to, you know, this is what your life's purpose was. Like and yeah. it's, uh, that, that concept of like, I, I think Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft calls it being a learn it all. And when you go through that process of, oh, of learning that. something to that depth, you sort of, now you have this unique knowledge that you can share, which, which is pretty interesting. Well, and I think for me, it's made me kind of a networking evangelist, mm-hmm. which, you know, I, I didn't know such a thing needed to exist, mm-hmm. but I, I really think that not only does networking make us more successful in business because we've developed these relationships and connections and opportunities, but I think it makes us happier in life. Mm -hmm. And whether people deem themselves an introvert or an extrovert, so to speak, I think it doesn't matter. I really believe that as human beings, we have a need. We have a need deep in our DNA for connection with other human beings. Mm -hmm. And the way that we forge those connections is we establish community everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. So whether it's you and you and me sitting here talking today, or it's going to a networking event, some kind of reception, maybe having lunch one-on-one with a friend or with a small group of friends, whatever it is, when we leave our houses in the morning, we leave our community. We're part of a community. Mm -hmm. Our kids are on little league teams. Well, we have we have relationships with the parents of those little league players. That's a community. So we form and establish community everywhere we go. Mm-hmm. And I believe the reason we do that is to deepen our own sense of belonging because belonging feels so good. Yeah. And so, you know, once people can discover what is that skill or that insight or that knowledge or that thing that they want to share with the world, not to sound so esoteric, but it's almost like we have a responsibility to share it yeah, and yep. sharing it feels good. And when, when people feel so passionately about something, it reflects well. And, and I think others 
sort of glom onto that. And, and that is definitely what has happened with this business. I, I, um, I never knew it was something people would pay for, but because <laughs> it is so important to yeah. people, it, it's become a business for me. And I, I, um, I'm just delighted. It's amazing. I, I you know, and I, I, one of the things that I find is so powerful when I get to teach these authors, aspiring authors, how to, to write a book is a big portion of it is I have to teach them how to network, how to, how to interview people, how to talk to people. And I was inspired by something you wrote in your book that I think is really interesting about, um, many people are never taught about this as thinking about it as a skill. And here's what you write. You write, networking is part art, part science. It's about knowing how to carry, start and carry on a conversation about remaining well-informed. It's about listening and being responsive. It's about building self-confidence and context. At times it's about wanting something from someone, but it's also about being generous with your own information, context, and resources. Networking is something you should be doing every day, not just when you need to. It's a muscle that requires regular exercise. Uh, and it's, it is, it is something that I think in today's world, when we all feel like we're sort of connected to these social networks and sort of things like that, that you, you really do say it right. That like, this is sort of a, it's a, it's a contact sport. And, and I think that by forcing ourselves to sort of be coached through it and I, you know, I didn't realize I was sort of doing it, but I'm forcing them to learn some of these skills that you talk about through this excuse of writing a book. I, I hope that they learn that this is something they got to do every day to build and continue to demonstrate their competency and knowledge. That's exactly right. And, and honestly, what I find is, um, it's energizing and it's energizing to hear other mm -hmm. people's stories. And then to think about how does that fit into the context of my own life and how can I utilize mm -hmm. this new information to inform my own? And so I, mm -hmm. I think that not only will it make the, your audience better writers, but I think they will be more excited. They'll, they'll feel more fulfilled by the work that they're doing because they'll realize mm -hmm. that it will then be able to carry forward. You've heard the expression, you know, pay it forward. I think by, mm -hmm. by putting their thoughts on paper and sharing it with the world, they really are paying it mm -hmm. forward. How do you, how do you, you know, the, the one thing you talk about in the book a little bit is, you know, people think about networking when they need to look for a job, but they don't always sort of think about yeah. that. Purposeful networking sort of thing. What's the what's the guidance you give to people? Again, mine is, you know, pick up a project that requires you to connect with humans, like a book or whatever it is. How do you tell someone who's like, I don't really know how to start? Like, what's the excuse you tell them to create in their mind to get started? <laughs> I, I, I actually, you know, there's some exercises that I encourage people to do. First of all, I think that networking should never be about what have you done for me lately. Instead, mm -hmm. it should be about what can I do to help you? What can I do to help you? And and I'll tell you, remember, when I, when I met with those first five people that I asked to network with me, again, even though they didn't all agree with my intent to quit my job, all five people said, what can I do to help you? And as basic a question as that sounds, it was something that I wasn't asking for. And I, and I frankly wasn't asking it of other people. I wasn't saying, you know, what can I do to help you? And, and mm -hmm. there's something about that. When somebody says, what can I do to help you? It's not only is it selfless, but it shows they care. It shows your relationship is important. And frankly, I think that by being generous with our time, information, and resources, we are enriched as a result. And I think the gifts mm -hmm. that we get in return are so much greater. So the first thing mm -hmm. I encourage people to do is first have a great attitude about networking. Just decide you are a great networker and you are. I call yeah. myself, I have, you know, I think I have the world's greatest title. I am a master <laughs> networker. It's like, you know, master <laughs> of the universe, then comes the master yeah. networker. Do you Honestly, need a belt with that? I feel like I, you need some kind of a belt or a I jacket so, or some kind of belt. Or a sash. Yeah. I think a sash is a good idea. Yeah. But or a katana I, sword or something. That'd be worth that'd be good too. <laughs> you know, I bestow this title on anybody who will take it because it was completely self-inflicted. I think if all of the people listening today, I hope I hope you know you are master networkers. Just decide you're a great networker and you suddenly are. And in fact, think about the characteristics, the personality characteristics of the people that you like to be around, and then you emulate those characteristics. Don't be anybody that you're not, but instead be the very best version of yourself. And you suddenly are a magnet for others who want to connect with you. And by the way, a smile helps. If you simply smile at people, it makes other people happy. It makes you happy. It's this lovely virtuous cycle. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I encourage people to make at least two lists. And there are other lists that I encourage, but of the two lists, the first one is make a list of people that you already know, people already in your relationship base who you want to reconnect with. 
Mm. And this could be somebody you saw at the gym this morning. It could be your dear old Aunt Sally that you haven't seen in 10 years. It could be a former neighbor, somebody you knew in college, uh, a, a professor, a coach, a friend. But reconnect with people who are already in your relationship base. And by the way, this doesn't have to be a daunting task. I know that our listeners today have thousands of connections. Mm -hmm. Pick five, start Mm -hmm. with five, and then go from there and keep that list up to date. Uh, and then, and then the next list would be a list of people that you don't know, but would like to, and ask the people on list number one to help connect you to the people on list number two. And so once you have sort of a plan, begin connecting. And, and I think often the most difficult part of the networking equation is doing the outreach saying, will you get together with me? Are you willing to connect? And by and large, people will say, yes, you know, those first 200 people that I connected with, I actually asked 205 people to meet with me and 200 said yes. Wow, really? And what I tell people is, huh. yeah, don't you worry. I know the names of those other five people. <laughs> they- and, and the truth is I do. I know their names, but they don't even matter. The people who matter are the 200 who said yes. And I think the reason they said yes was not just because they were warm connections from mutual acquaintances, but because people need these connections. They need these connections. And so especially as your students become authors, as they begin their research, as they do both their primary and secondary research in order to master their topics, I think that what they'll discover is that by connecting with other people, not only will it help to inform their books, whatever the topic is that they choose, but it will help to enrich their lives. Awesome. And and to think uh, some of this all, all started with a, uh, a a dilly bar and a TED talk, right? That's it's, uh, exactly it's, right. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of just neat to think though about. I think you just in some ways the universe speaks to us. You sometimes just have to be open to the lessons it gives us. And and I think your 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 story is one that who would have ever thunk it, right? You know, a woman who is who is basically a math major, never had a book in her, has now written a book and has more ahead, and has now basically turned that kind of randomish networking experience experiment into an entire business and and way of being. So it's pretty awesome to see, and I think inspiring as a lesson for others to look at. Thank you so much. I'm grateful to you for for your interest. This is fun. Well, well, thank you so much, and uh, and everyone, uh, coffee lunch coffee is is an awesome blog. At, you know, especially November. Look out, you're gonna get big bomb with your 30 days of November <laughs> magic. But uh, thanks again for this. This was super fun. Wonderful.